Baptist Community Ministries continues the mission started in the early 20th century when Southern Baptist Hospital first began caring for the people of New Orleans. Creating a healthy community remains the goal of BCM in its support of the WYES Reshaping a Greater New Orleans series, providing in-depth information about challenging issues facing our region in the 21st century. BCM and WYES, a partnership for a healthy, strong community. One thing is for sure, in New Orleans we like to eat and we like it tasty. But there's growing interest in making sure that good food is good for you. In the latest of the Reshaping a Greater New Orleans series, you're going to hear from nutrition experts, local chefs and farmers about how to find the freshest ingredients and the benefits of using them. Tomatoes, parsley and pickled okra, that sounds awesome and Teen Chop star Kid Chef Ileana demonstrates how to turn those fresh ingredients into a healthy meal. Now it's time to get cooking. So for the next half hour, you'll learn about how you can bring the local bounty of fresh food to your kitchen, get some guidance about good nutrition and food preparation, and still deliver that great New Orleans flavor. In good eating, good health. Sunray Grill owner and chef Tom Hinyup is picky about what he serves his customers. You want to have as much fresh product as you possibly can. We get produce deliveries every single day. We get seafood deliveries every single day and we inspect it every single day. That's a big part of, of owning a restaurant is when, when you get that delivery in, you want to go through everything, whether it be fish, seafood, meats, um, anything. You want to make sure that you're getting the fresh and highest quality items for your customers. The chef says our geography makes great ingredients almost unavoidable. Within arm's reach of what we call down the road in Plaquemines Parish, we have some of the best citrus, some of the best tomatoes, some of the best, not some of the best, the best seafood, I think, in the world. The inspiration for creation of a colorful, healthy salad. Well, the, the kale is actually a little bit further out from arm's reach. That came from Baton Rouge, but the shrimp were caught right down in, in Plaquemines Parish. The satsumas I picked up, at a farmer's market uh, right, in, right in Bell Chase. The, the pecans picked up right in Bell Chase. And, and I have a honey guy that, uh, that I've been dealing with for years now that, that brings me some of the best honey you'll ever taste. And I made a little satsuma dressing and I used the honey to sweeten it, cooked off some shrimp with a little of the, uh, took some of the zest off the satsuma, put that on the, on the shrimp, seared it in a little sesame oil, tossed that with some honey and some pecans and put it over the kale with a little satsuma vinaigrette. Food grown close to home is important for the health of his customers. Especially dealing with local vendors and local farmers and local fishermen, there's no additives. So you know what's in the product. You're not eating something that you're unaware of. The hometown honey goes through just one filtering process between hive and jar. The honey that we produce here locally has the local pollen and the local nectar and it gives you uh, the properties of any, anything that can be uh, antibacterial for you or can fight your allergies. That whole healthy aspect, it's something I guess it's probably kind of in my DNA at this point from, from just growing up around it. I, I didn't start using those products when I started becoming a chef. It was something that I was introduced to as a child, you know, and just was able to kind of bring it along with me uh, along this long, crazy ride. <laughs> Chefs across the city are adding menu items that emphasize fresh and nutritious. Oxner Fitness Center dietitian Molly Kimball founded the program Eat Fit NOLA to work with chefs like Eat Fit Ambassador Chef Carl Schubert to rethink some dishes. We have our dietitians that work in the fitness center working one-on-one -on, -one on one with clients to do a lot of wellness education. We're working with them on how do they plan their meals, prepare, how do they fuel their bodies, but dining out in restaurants is the wild card. From a dietitian's perspective, how would I want someone to dine at this restaurant? What, what would I want to arrive on their plate? And that's really what we work with the chefs to do. So we look at you know, a greater emphasis on plant-based fats instead of animal fats, uh, lean proteins, lots of produce, vegetables, fruits. Um, if there is a type of a starch on there, just whole grains. So it's things that fit, whether someone's just trying to eat clean or if they're looking to manage their blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, any of those things, Eat Fit is going to be a fit for that. It was a very organic growth, starting with just a handful of restaurants to about 20 in the first year, then 50, then 70. I think fresh oregano would be nice. 
Chef Carl is the head chef and co-owner of DTB Restaurant on Oak Street. In his role as Eat Fit Ambassador, he works with chefs around town to develop lighter but tasty dining choices. We go in detail through these dishes um, about how many grams of this, how many ounces of that, how many teaspoons of that, to where the guests are, are it's narrowed down to how many calories and, and everything that they need to know about the dish. There's nothing wrong with, with the way people dine, but what we're trying to do is give them a few more options, take some of the guesswork out of it. Our goal is so that somebody, you know, people don't have to be that person that you're asking this with this on the side and served with this instead of this. We're doing all that part for you so that you can just say, I want the eat fit version of whatever this is. You know, we're absolutely not finger wagging. That's what we always say. We, we're not finger wagging about it. We're not, you should do this or shouldn't do this. But the way I look at it is it's not just what is in this food. It's not just that this has this many calories or this much sodium. It's how's that going to leave us feeling? Go in and get your, get your, you know, trout amandine and your barbecue shrimp if that's what you want. But what our goal is, is to give you other options. We're saying sit down, we're going to show you what dishes can fit within you being safe to eat and still maintaining the diet or the lifestyle, whatever it is that you're doing. While Eat Fit Nola is nudging both chefs and diners toward lighter choices, developing healthy eating habits begins early. Parents of babies and young children get advice about the importance of good nutrition at the Ashe Cultural Center Birthright Program, which emphasizes breastfeeding for babies and a healthy diet thereafter. All of our activities and uh, field trips are centered around uh, healthy eating. What we want to do is provide the best foundation for the baby, uh, for the child, and that starts preconception and while the mother is uh, pregnant. Dads are welcome too. You know, think about this. Many of us want the best cars if we can afford it. We want the best homes, the best clothing, the best jewelry, the best of everything, and we should. And my question is, if we would want the best of those material things for ourselves, why not give the best to our children? Parents also learn that good nutrition is a family affair. So what we're trying to do is get people to change their lifestyle, incorporate uh, good heat eating habits so that they can have a healthier lifestyle. Children, especially with the breastfeeding. A good nutritional regimen allows for a healthier family and longevity for the family. Nutrition expert Molly Kimball says what children eat can have a big impact on their developing bodies. We start out with kids. A lot of times people say, oh, well, let them have it. I mean, they're just a kid. Their little bodies, they especially don't need all of the sugar or food dyes or whatever it might be. Then it's not just their bones or their teeth or their, their height that's going to be affected. It's their brain development, it's their energy, it's how they're going to interact with other people. All of those things are really tightly integrated with what they're putting into their bodies. Starting even with kids, number one, to you know help them kind of develop these preferences for more nutritious foods and be familiar with this and it's not something totally foreign to them, that's going to be key. But it's also kind of building that foundation for them of these really healthy, strong, high-functioning bodies. Everybody say a Rugula. Langston Hughes Academy kindergartners enjoy a crisp, bright morning in their edible schoolyard. Their instructor, Matt Durham, is introducing them to new tastes like the arugula grown in the garden, planted and nurtured by the students at the school. Arugula may not be everyone's favorite. I like these arugula. Can I pitch another one? But it did win over some of the students. K through eight students at U's and other first line charter schools get the opportunity to learn about food and nutrition firsthand through the edible schoolyard. The mission of Edible Schoolyard is to teach children to make healthy connections through food to themselves, to their community, and to nature. So we teach children how to grow food and then how to cook it in healthy ways. There are teeny tiny worms that live inside this soil and we're going to take our popsicle sticks and we're just going to gently move that soil around and we're going to see if we can spot any of them and if you find one... You the students learn about nature's creatures Two and how to respect them. Perfect. Say, good job, princess. Good job, princess. The benefits of fresh food and how to prepare it are also part of the program. At First Line's Samuel Green Elementary, students get to cook the bounty grown in their garden in the school's kitchen. 
We're cooking what's growing in the garden. So we'll use the greens, use carrots, whatever's coming out of the garden. I think our main message is just that cooking is fun, that food comes from the earth, um, and that food that is good for you tastes good too, and it makes us feel good. Not trying to make any foods bad or good, but just saying that making healthy choices is gonna make your life better and make you feel good and make you feel proud of, of how you're eating. What we're hearing anecdotally from many of our families is that children are really pushing their families to eat healthy, fresh food because that's what they're getting in their, in their culinary classes and in their garden classes here at Edible Schoolyard New Orleans. My first thought of healthy food was, ill, like, that's disgusting. But then, like, when I actually tried it, it was really delicious and it's just, it's a balance. And that's what I've learned from the Edible Schoolyard, that when you eat healthy, um, it really impacts your life in a good way. Not to mention introducing the children to a variety of foods. Say garlic. garlic. Remember the garlic that we planted? Yeah. Let, I want to show you some garlic plants that are growing a little bit. Ooh, it smells like garlic. It smells like garlic. Place that little piece of garlic on the ground and then let's rock and roll this way. Yeah. We like the smell? Yeah, it smells good. All right. Ingraining the idea of healthy eating into teens and young adults is something that a local young chef has championed. Using fresh ingredients to prepare delicious food has been the focus of Kid Chef Eliana de las Casas for most of her 17 years. You might recognize her as Food Network's 2016 Chopped Teen Grand Champion. Eliana will continue her food career ambitions in college after she completes the culinary arts program at NOCA inside its kitchen, and outside in the school garden. Here at Press Street Gardens, NOCA culinary students are lucky to have this space to learn how to grow the food that we cook. We're training tomorrow's chefs, and so we want to make sure that they're actually learning about seasonality and using local food, because we believe it's not a trend, but the way that the world is moving, and it's more socially, environmentally responsible. Food grown close by, especially in your own garden, has more nutrition. Because once crops are harvested, they start losing vitamins and minerals. Our students are learning to be adaptive to what's actually growing in their environment at any given time of year. They're learning a flexibility that I think is just a huge boon for a chef. They're always encouraged to make healthy decisions and use the things that are really good and very bad for us at times in moderation. You can't be raised in New Orleans and not eat fatty food or salty food sometimes. And thinking that you can't and that you won't is pointless, right? So for human sustainability, we just have to learn how to substitute and do things in moderation. And then also, you know, be outside in the garden and use our energy towards producing things, and that's better for our bodies too. A great place to find fruits and veggies is the Crescent City Farmer's Market, which has different locations around town. It's a shopping option for the entire community and an economic boost for local farmers. We are creating sustainable local economies and health, access to healthy food. So we're supporting farmers, small farmers, bringing um, you know, fresh whole food to the people of New Orleans. We're just trying to you know, support our community by bringing in healthy options. The offerings are seasonal and varied, from greens and root vegetables, Those are green. I'm quite sure y'all eat that with cornbread, huh? to local seafood. And we catch those, that's Lake de Salmon's catfish. We catch them in the bayous and the lakes. Most of our vendors come from within about 200 miles. We have some urban farmers that are here, um, so growing right here in the city and that come to our market. Except for the occasional holiday non-edible offerings, the focus of the farmer's market is fresh and nutritious. It's food only, um, producer only, so you're either talking with the person that actually grew it or um, an employee of theirs who might work on the farm with them as well. And you just have this beautiful abundance of fruits and vegetables that I think are just inspiring. Do you want to pick out three peppers that look good? This one, that's one. I thought I'd take you along on one of my trips to the market and give you an idea of how to prepare a quick but nutritious dish from the fresh produce I found there. In markets like the Crescent City Farmers Market in downtown New Orleans, you can find a variety of fresh produce that travels from local farms to your home table. There's a lot to choose from, so much fresh produce. 
and freshly caught seafood from Louisiana waters. So hey, how's it hey, going? how you been? I'm great, how are you? Good. So you have all of this lovely produce here today. So can you tell us where this produce comes from? Um, we live in Garyville in St. John Parish. What is the value of having all of this fresh produce available to people at the market? They love coming here and get fresh produce that they know was picked yesterday. So these tender greens look beautiful. I've actually never heard or seen or used these, so I'm really excited to try this today. And I think I'm going to get one of the smaller cauliflowers to use that for maybe a bruschetta. One very important ingredient, bread. I think I'm actually going to try out your baguette today and make a bruschetta with it. Sounds great. So this will definitely be, be one of the star of the shows. I could use a few more things for the bruschetta and this produce looks lovely. Can you tell me where the produce is grown? It's grown in Muntz, Louisiana. Now I actually think I'm going to get these tomatoes, I've already picked some of them out, and are going to get a bunch of parsley and these Meyer lemons, these look amazing. So do the two of these. And you said you had some pickled okra here? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I think this is going to be delicious and my bruschetta. So I'm going to take one of these as well. All right, there you okay. go. Thank, Thank you, you very much. so much. Now it's time to get cooking. So right now, I am just cutting crostinis for the bruschetta that I'm going to make. And we're just going to do maybe about half inch slices at an angle and go through. And then I'm going to put these into the pan and toast the crostini. And once they get lightly golden brown on one side, I'm gonna flip them over. So next, I'm going to chop up my vegetables. First, I'm going to cut up some of this cauliflower right here. I'm going to cut it into little pieces and you just kind of work your way in like this at an angle. And then I'm going to take these chunks right here and cut them into smaller pieces. In the meantime, I'm going to check on my baguettes. So they're starting to toast, so I'm just going to flip them over. Oh, that's gorgeous. So once the baguettes are golden brown on the second side, I'm going to remove them from the pan and let them cool, and then I will start to saute my vegetables. I'll first cut the greens into little ribbons. Next, I'll dice the tomatoes and an even smaller dice of the okra. I'm gonna add a little bit more olive oil into the pan. So we're gonna add in just a few of these onions here. I'm gonna add in some of this cauliflower. I'm not gonna do too much, just a little bit. Now I'm gonna add in some seasoning. So I'm gonna let the cauliflower cook for a little bit longer. So I'm going to add in this garlic and some of these tender greens. And you really don't have to cook the tender greens that much. I'm gonna cut up some of this parsley here. We'll sprinkle this in at the end. Now I'm going to add in some of these pickled okra that I've chopped up. And we're gonna get a little bit of these tomatoes in here. So I'm gonna turn this off, add just a tad bit more tender greens. I don't wanna, and I don't wanna cook these too much, just some nice freshness at the end. That's really good, I'm gonna add just a little bit of this Meyer lemon in there. Add a little brightness to the dish. Mmm, that's delicious. Just add a tad bit more salt. And we are good to go. So now I'm going to just take this crostini that we've toasted. Got my tongs, and I'm just gonna spoon a little bit of this right 
on top. You've got a little bit of everything. It's gonna be so tasty. And there you have it. You've got a nice simple meal with produce that you've got right from the farmer's market and you can even have this as a little light snack. Enjoy! Access to fresh, nutritious food for the hungry is an increasing focus of food banks. Second Harvest sources and delivers food to hundreds of food pantries across South Louisiana. Sankofa is one of them. They run a farmer's market in the Lower Nine and they saw a need among the people that they were serving through the farmer's market for no-cost food, and they wanted to open a food pantry. But they wanted it to be a healthy food pantry. They really want to address holistically the nutritional needs of the people that they're serving. So they wrap in nutrition education, and they only serve healthy food in their food pantry. You can actually take whatever the fresh stuff as much as you want. Sankofa partners with the American Heart Association to help clients make healthier choices. I don't need to cook any pies, none of that, because I go grab me a fruit. Seniors selecting food at Sankofa say they've learned that healthy food makes them feel better. The fruits and vegetables, if I eat more of them, I'm more active than I am, because usually I'll be tired. But I'm more active now, I do everything. We don't have a, uh, any type of soup market in the Lower Ninth Ward. And by this being here, I'm able to get things that need for us, uh, fresh vegetables and everything, because I am a heart patient. And it's, it's really a big convenience. I've learned that because of my heart condition that I have to eat healthy if I want to stay here on Earth. Seniors also stock up on fresh food at Healthy Cities Mobile Pantry events, hosted by Second Harvest after school. They are open not just to the students and their parents, but to the community. And this really speaks to the high need among the senior population and the gap in services that are available to them. So for seniors, that may make sure that they're getting enough protein um, to support bone development, tissue development, kind of their specific dietary needs. One of Second Harvest Child Hunger programs is Kids Cafe. It serves meals during summer and after school. The West Bank Boys and Girls Club of Southeast Louisiana is an eager participant. We're able to really build on lessons that we teach by, by showing them what a healthy meal looks like, exposing them to more than just snacks, more than just chips, that sort of stuff, candy bars. We're able to actually show our kids this is what a balanced meal looks like and this is what potentially should be a part of your day if you're here or if you're not. We take very seriously at Second Harvest the fact that food is medicine and that we make a choice every time we send food out for that to be nutritious food to really serve the needs and to make sure that we are growing healthier uh, population in South Louisiana. Training doctors to coach patients to eat healthy makes Tulane University a trendsetter. We are really the world's premier teaching kitchen uh, with the goal of teaching you medical students how to talk to your patients about nutrition but from a food first perspective. Chefs at Tulane Center for Culinary Medicine show future physicians who may one day become surgeons the knife skills to chop vegetables and how to transform spaghetti and meat sauce from naughty to nice. So we do four variations of spaghetti that vary in ingredients, uh, lowering the amount of meat, adding whole wheat pasta instead of white pasta, and version four is actually completely vegetarian. We use lentils instead of meat in the sauce. So we talk about the nutrition content, the sodium, the fiber, uh, where that's coming from, how we improvise and add in more flavor. I think it's becoming a problem in America, um, the way people are eating as a whole. So learning how to provide better meals for your patients is a good idea. I want to learn to be a healthy adult before I want to learn how to be a doctor. Eating a healthy diet, being able to prepare food daily within a limited budget means that I can translate that to my patients at a more personal level. The center teaches medical students and professionals and offers free six-week classes to members of the community. I realized that I was chopping up vegetables completely wrong and wasting a lot of time every week and it just makes it so much easier and me more likely to to eat more vegetables because I can chop them up so quickly. And professional way. <laughs> yeah. 
and we're learning different ways of adding more spice and not adding most, as much salt and fat to the food, but still have it taste really good. And I think those, those lessons will definitely stick with me. Being in New Orleans and teaching this to the community, I think we know this community needs it. We have some of the highest health disparities in the nation. Uh, I also say if we can do this here, we can do it anywhere. Throughout our community, opportunities exist to help guide the way to good eating that's also good for our health. Programs like GrowDat Youth Farm, Greenlight New Orleans, and Backyard Gardeners Network increase access to fresh food and even encourage folks to grow their own garden. Market Umbrella and its Crescent City Farmers Market bring fresh produce to different parts of the city throughout the week. Sankofa brings fresh food to Ninth Ward residents, and Second Harvest reinforces food security across the community. Oxner's Eat Fit NOLA takes its nutrition guidelines into food markets as well as restaurants, and also offers an app to help locate where to find Eat Fit food, along with descriptions of nutritional content. Advocates of healthy eating emphasize, however, that the idea is not to do away with the taste that folks in New Orleans have for good food, but to get us all thinking about fresher, healthier options and begin incorporating them in our everyday lives. And so there's, there is always kind of that negotiation factor and, you know, most of us, myself included, don't want to say every single thing I put into my body has got to be 100% nutritious. But if the majority of the time what we're putting into our bodies is, we're going to feel a lot better and be able to kind of live the life that we want to live. Kimball adds that the basics of New Orleans cuisine actually do lean to the healthy side. Example, the local staple, red beans. The foods that are so indigenous, red beans, for example. Red beans are one of the highest antioxidant foods out there, but they really kind of are under the radar for that, you know. So the biggest thing that we found with red beans is, what are you gonna put with it except besides the white rice? So brown rice is an option, but no rice is an even better option. You know, we don't even need the rice because the beans have plenty of carbs. So the message for longtime home cooks and those just honing their culinary skills as well as for those who look to others to do the cooking for them. We are blessed with an abundance of fresh food opportunities that offer us good eating and good health. Food can be everything that New Orleans cuisine is, which is flavorful and bright and beautiful and, and, and just invigorates your palate and doesn't have to be over the top heavy or too spicy. We live to eat, not eat to live. There's no doubt both can coexist, health and, and great food. Because you live in a paradise of, of, of the world. It's, you have so much food, so much fresh seafood, so much fresh uh, farm-raised vegetables. It's, it's amazing the bounty that you get out of this place, but there's absolutely no reason that people shouldn't be eating fresh every single day and demand it from your restaurants and your grocery stores and yourself. Go to WYES for information about community resources that can help keep you on the pathway to healthy eating. That's WYES dot O-R-G. Baptist Community Ministries continues the mission started in the early 20th century when Southern Baptist Hospital first began caring for the people of New Orleans. Creating a healthy community remains the goal of BCM and its support of the WYES Reshaping a Greater New Orleans series, providing in-depth information about challenging issues facing our region in the 21st century. BCM and WYES, a partnership for a healthy, strong community.